would they, Louis and James, after organizing the data through frequency distribution table, we are now ready to present the data through statistical graphs or charts, which is the focus of our discussion today. Presenting the data through statistical graphs is done because it is easier to comprehend or analyze the data when presented graphically than numerically. Where can you use these statistical graphs? First, graphs are useful in getting the attention of the audience in publication or in speaking engagement. Second, graphs are used to discuss an issue, reinforce a critical point, or summarize a data set. And third, you can also discover a trend or pattern in a situation over a period of time. The commonly used graphs that will be discussed today are histogram, frequency polygon, and the cumulative frequency graph or ogive. We will construct the statistical graphs and charts through Microsoft Excel. The first statistical graph that we will discuss in this video lecture is the histogram. Histogram is a graph that displays the data by using the vertical bars of various heights to represent the frequencies. This graph is applicable to continuous data. Let's create a histogram with the help of Microsoft Excel. I am using Microsoft Excel 2019. So we need a raw data, and this is the data that we will use, the age of group of professionals. So we highlight our data. Then you look for the insert tab. It's a tab between the home and the page layout where you can find the different charts on the middle part. You click this one, the insert is statistic chart. Then you click histogram. So there you have it, our histogram. We can customize this graph, but first we need to understand what is this chart all about. Okay, so the numbers here on the horizontal axis, these are the bins or the range. So we have here 21 to 29.6. 29.6 to 38.2, 38.2 to 46.8, and 46.8 to 55.4. Please observe that we use here brackets and parentheses. Okay, these are the vertical bars representing the frequencies. So, for example, 21 to 29.6, the frequency is 31. The second bin is 29.6 to 38.2, excluding 29.6, the frequency is 7. For the third bin, 38.2 to 46.8, the frequency is 9, okay? excluding 38.2. We can also customize this, just like what I have mentioned, by clicking the plus sign beside the chart. You can edit the axis title so we edit the title of the horizontal axis to age we can also edit the title of the vertical axis to frequency we can also edit the title of our chart to age of a group of professionals for example, that will be the title of our chart. Okay. okay. You can also customize the size of the bins if you want to. So just click format axis. Okay. So here the setting is automatic. So you can change the width of the bin, just click the width wind, then change it. Originally, this, the width of the bin is 8.6, so you can change it to 10 if you want. Okay, so uh, you, we change the size or the width of the bin to 10. So we have there 21 to 31, 31 to 41, 41 to 51, or 51.61. If you want also to add 
another bin or like we will have five bins in our chart you can also do that one do the same click the format axis then you just click the number of bins change it to five okay there you have five bins with of course different um bin width okay so we have there 21 to 27.2 27 27.2 to 33.4 Okay, so this is our histogram. The second is statistical graph is the frequency polygon. This graph displays the data by using the lines that connect the points plotted for the frequencies at the midpoint or that is the class mark of the class. So remember that one, if you will do frequency polygon, you need to determine the midpoint or the class mark of the classes. Okay, so we will create now the frequency polygon of our data. Okay, so first, we need to determine the class mark or the midpoint of our classes. You can create a formula here in the Excel. Uh, I created this formula equals quantity 21 plus 25, uh, which are the upper limit and the lower limit of our classes divided it by 2. Or if you already determined the class mark, you can just input it in the, in the cells. For 26 to 30, the class mark is 28, 31 to 35, class mark is 33, and 36 to 40, the class mark is 38. Okay, so first we need to highlight the frequency, the second column, the number of employees, highlight it. Then you look for, again, the insert tab where you can find the charts. You look for this icon, the insert line or area chart, click it. Then under 2D line, you click only the first icon, which is oh, which has the label line. Okay. So before we customize our chart, we first check this one. Okay. The numbers here below or at the horizontal axis, okay, we need to change it so that we can use the class mark or the midpoint of the classes. So right click, then we look for the select data. Okay, So a pop-up message will appear and you look into the column of the horizontal category axis labels. Under here, you have here 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, So you click edit. Then a pop-up message again will appear. It says access labels and it is um, asking for the range. Okay, so this time you will now highlight the class mark. Okay, just highlight the class mark column. Then you click OK. So it will, the class marks will appear. Okay, then click OK again. So notice the numbers on the horizontal axis are the midpoints of the classes. Okay, so you may now customize your chart. You may edit the chart title. Let's say the title is Age of Employees. Okay. You can also edit the title of the horizontal and the vertical axis. Just click the plus beside the chart. Okay, then check axis titles. There you have it. You can now edit the axis title, the horizontal axis title. You can change this one to midpoint of age. Then on this side, you can edit it to frequencies. Okay. Uh, remember, you can also change colors, you can change styles, okay, if you want to, yeah. You can click styles if you want to have colors for your charts. So this is how you will do a frequency polygon graph. After the frequency polygon, we will now have the cumulative frequency graph or OJIVE. This is the graph that represents the cumulative frequencies of the classes. So if you want to use this graph, you need to determine the cumulative frequency of the classes. Remember that cumulative frequency 
is the sum of the frequencies accumulated up to the upper boundary of a class in the distribution. Okay, so we will create the cumulative frequency graph or the ogive of this data. This is the data for randomly selected high school students and the following values are the IQ frequency distribution. Okay, so when we want to construct the graph of a cumulative frequency or the ogive, we need to determine the cumulative frequency. Okay, so we already have here the cumulative frequency. How did we get it? It's since the lower class limit is 90 to 98. Okay, so we copy the first frequency 6, then you just add 22, 28. 28 plus 43, 71, 71 plus 28, 99, 99 plus 9 is 108. So the total uh, frequency of our data is 108. Okay, so let's create the ogive of this data. Okay, we, uh, we highlight the whole table. Okay, and then we select insert again. Then we look for this one in the insert line or area chart, click it. Then you click the 2D line, okay? So you, the chart will look like this, okay? So you will see the orange line is the cumulative frequency as indicated in the legend. Okay, the blue line is the frequency only, okay? So we will delete this one, okay? You just click the blue line, okay? And just delete it. Okay, so what's left is the cumulative frequency graph, okay? If we want, we want to start the cumulative frequency with zero, we just need to add, okay, um, another row. Okay, we insert another row. Then we will add another class limit, which is 81 to 89. Okay, and the frequency will be zero. So we start and the cumulative frequency is zero. Okay, so we will do the same process. We just first delete this one, and highlight, insert, then click for this one to the line. Okay, then again delete this one because we do not need the frequency, we only need the cumulative frequency. So as you can see, we started the frequency with zero, that's 81 to 89 until the last frequency which is the 108 bit uh, uh, in the class list 126 to 100 class limit i should say to 126 to 134 okay so we can now customize our chart okay we can edit the title this is the iq or ogi of the IQ IQ of the high school students okay. we can also edit the um, horizontal and The vertical axis just click the plus sign beside the chart then click axis title this is now the cumulative frequency okay and this is the class limits Um, for the design, you can actually click for the design if you want to have um, different uh, designs for the appearance of your graph. You can do this one. Okay, so you can just choose the um, ogive chart that you want based on the chart style. Okay, so this is how you do the um, ogive chart or graph. For the other types of graphs, you can use the bar graph. The bar graph is used when your data are qualitative or categorical. 
A bar graph can be drawn using either horizontal or the vertical bars. What's the difference between histogram and bar graph? It's the spaces between the vertical bars. Okay. So let's create the bar graph of our data. This is the data for the performance rating. The categories are very satisfactory, satisfactory, excellent, fear, and poor with its corresponding frequencies. Okay, so we just need to highlight the data or the whole table. Then we click insert. Then we look for this one, the insert column or bar chart. Click it. Then under the 2D column, we choose the first one with the label clustered column. Okay, so your bar graph appears like this. So when you interpret it on the first vertical bar, you will have the very satisfactory category with 20 frequency, the satisfactory category with 25 frequency, excellent, or 15 frequency, fair, 10, and the poor is 5. Okay. So we can also customize our bar graph. You just click the plus sign beside the chart. Then we click for the axis titles. Then we can now edit the title of the horizontal and the vertical axis. We can change this one to frequency and the horizontal axis title to category and the title of our bar graph to performance rating. So this is a very simple way to create your bar graph for categorical data or qualitative data. Next, we have the Pareto chart. Pareto chart is used to represent the frequency distribution for a categorical variable. And the frequencies are displayed by the heights of vertical bars, which are arranged in order from highest to lowest. So you will analyze a Pareto chart by comparing the heights of the bars. And the difference of the histogram and a Pareto chart is the arranged frequency. Okay, so take note of that. You need to arrange the frequencies of your data when you want to use the Pareto chart. Okay, so let's create the Pareto chart of the same data that we use in the bar graph. Okay, so when we want to do a Pareto chart, we need first to arrange the frequencies from highest to lowest. So we start first by, you highlight all this one, the data. Then under home, you choose on this part, sort and filter, then custom chart. Okay, so on this column, uh, it says here sort by frequency, that's correct. Then for the order, we have here largest to smallest. Okay, we choose that one. Okay, then we have here the arranged frequency. So we are now ready to create the Pareto chart. Again, insert. Then you look for this one, the insert is statistic chart, click for it. Then beside is the histogram, but you will not click that one. Rather, you will click the Pareto chart. So this is the Pareto chart of the performance rating. We can um, delete this one because we do not need that. We can customize again our chart by clicking the plus sign beside the chart. You click the axis title. Then you edit the horizontal axis title to category. Okay. And then the vertical axis title to frequency. Okay. Then the title of the chart will be performance rating. Okay, so we will analyze the Pareto chart based on the height of the frequency, which is arranged from the highest to lowest. A pie graph is a circle that is divided into sections or wedges according to the percentage of frequencies in each category of the distribution. So take note, the whole circle measures 360 degrees. So we need to divide the circle 
into equal proportions. So we will have the formula for the degrees that is equal to F over N times 360 degrees, where F is the frequency for each class and N is the sum of the frequencies. For the percentage, we will use the formula F over N times 100. Then, you may now do your pie graph with the help of a protractor and compass if you're doing it manually. For the last graph, we will create the pie chart. Okay, so this is the data for the cost of a construction house. So it's like, for example, if the total cost of construct in constructing a house is 1 million, then that means 25% of 1 million is allotted for labor, 10% of 1 million is allotted to buy the timber, 15% of that 1 million is allotted for the supervision, uh, supervising theme, okay, and other categories. So to create the pie graph of this data, we highlight our table or the data, then we look or click the insert, then we look for the insert pie or the donut chart. So click it. Under the 2D pie, we click the first one, which is the pie. Okay. So your pie graph will appear like this with the legends below the circle using the different colors. Okay. If you do not want to have the legends below the, below the pie graph, we can delete that one. Okay. Or uncheck, uh, uncheck the legend. Okay. Then you click a portion or a part of the circle, right click, then click add data labels. Okay. So on the different portions of the circle, the numbers or the percentages will appear. Okay. So we again click the format data labels and The different label options will appear. So may, you may want to choose category name so that the different categories with its corresponding percentage will appear on the pie graph. So you have learned how to construct the different graphs using the Microsoft Excel. So always take note if you want to Describe your data, you present it through statistical graphs and charts.